this guy get melted body this is amazing we broke her stance do it hello everyone i hope you're having a great day in this video we are going to craft the most overpowered build of the entire game and i have to tell you that with this powerful setup you will be able to defeat the last boss of the dlc in seconds buddy in seconds obviously having a very powerful build and extremely broken build has a very very bad cost and that's the style this build is not going to be that fun to play at all it is actually so broken that it's ridiculous but i guess that's the point of this video and why i decided to use this build to defeat the last boss of the DLC because it is an absolute nightmare bro I actually tried to defeat that guy with a great katana trying to look good but the guy is an absolute monster so I decided to use this build and it was a walk in the park and I want to share this build for you because probably you will be struggling a lot with this guy and if you get tired of it or if you are like please just die then this build is going to be fantastic for that bro the main source of damage of this build is going to be the impenetrable thorns it is very probable that you already know this new sorcery that was introduced in Shadow of the Earth DLC. The spell by itself is already very powerful, but if we push it to the limits, we will reach that absurd point of destroying bosses in just two casts of this thing. So basically, it is very probable that they will nerf this spell at certain points. So I recommend you to use it as soon as possible. First of all, I will talk about the main features of this sorcery. I will explain the details of the build. Then we are going to test it against the most difficult targets of the DLC and the base game. And eventually, you will notice that this build doesn't care at all about what we are facing. It will destroy it, no matter what it is. If it's a DLC boss or if it's a base game boss it will destroy it and I will show you where you can obtain the most important elements of these builds such as the impenetrable thorns and the staffs that we are going to use to make it extremely powerful so without anything further to say let's see what we can do with this spell if you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video Okay guys, this time I don't have too much to say about this spell. The reason why this spell is so powerful is that somehow it managed to build up bleed on your target very very fast. Sometimes with only one cast you will be able to proc bleed twice on your target, which is absolutely insane. It has a very decent range as well and it doesn't take a lot of time to be fully casted. And it also can be buffed in multiple ways, making it even more powerful. And what I really like the most about this sorcery is that it doesn't require a high amount of intelligence, so we can use it with a relatively low intelligence build. Like in this case, I am only using enough intelligence to be able to use my staffs and with that we will be more than okay. Now a very important thing to say is that it is not going to be that powerful against enemies that are immune to bleed, such as Dragon or the Elden Beast. So despite of being probably the most broken build of all times, it is going to lack a little bit of power in certain scenarios. But those are the main features of this weapon. Now let's jump straight into the equipment and the stats. We are going to be using the Maternal Staff on plus 25. The reason why I am using this staff as my main weapon despite of having a lower sorcery scaling than the albinauric staff with the stats i'm using is because that for some reason with the maternal staff we are going to be dealing more damage because this one is going to proc bleed more times than the albinauric staff i actually don't know why but the albinauric staff is a great alternative if you are lacking of the maternal staff also we will use the staff of the guilty it doesn't need to be upgraded i am using it because it has a passive effect that boosts the power of the thorn sorcery and it works even if you don't cast the spell with this staff it only needs to be equipped in our left hand and we need any seal we have available to cast our main buffs and as i previously mentioned this setup has a terrible terrible drip but it's the cost of having such a powerful build i am going to be using the alberich set with the rakshasa's grips the reason why i am using this armor set is because the alberich set specifically the armor and the bracelets will boost the thorn sorceries by six percent with each piece which means that with these two pieces we have a 12 percent buff when using the impenetrable thorns the rakshasa set is very similar to the spellblade set that will boost your magic damage by two percent with each pieces but the rakshasa set does it with the overall damage and increase the damage you take a little bit and the reason why i'm using the hat of this guy is because i didn't find any other piece to make it look a little bit better however if you want to deal a little bit of more damage with this build you can use the white mask but it will look terribly terribly bad it's probably the worst looking build of all times bro it looks horrible man anyways as i told you at the start of the video this build is entirely about damage the best talismans we can use for this build are the lord of blood's exultation the magic scorpion charm the graven school talisman and the graven mass talisman now a very good alternative to cast the spell faster is the beloved stardust however this one will increase your damage by 30 percent so i don't consider this one as a very good option the only scenario where i see this one being useful is where you really need the speed to cast your spell for example if you are facing a very fast enemy and you don't have 
have enough time to cast your spell, then this one might save the day for you. But be mindful that you will be taking 30% more damage, and if you stack it with Hall of Shabriti, you will be taking 60% more damage, so it is a really dangerous talisman to use. Another great alternative is the Old Lord's Talisman to increase the duration of your buffs. And you never can go wrong with defensive talismans such as the Dragon Crest Gray Shield Talisman or any other defensive talisman you like to play. And in our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to be using the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear. The Blood Sucking Crack Tear is a new tier that was introduced in the Shadow of the Earth 3 DLC, and essentially what this tier does is to increase your damage by 20%, but it will slowly drain your HP as the time goes by. And this build doesn't consume a lot of stamina, so the Pickle Turtlenecks are very optional this time. If you want, you can equip any weapon with Seppuku and you can use it before each fight. This way, you will trigger the buff of the White Mask and the Lord of Blood's Exultation before starting the match, and you will start with that additional buff, which is a very useful trick and it is not very hard to perform. In order to get the max performance of this build, we need 60 on Vigor, 25 on Mind, 30 on Endurance, 33 on Faith, and 80 on Arcane. You only need 80 points on Arcane. I leveled it up all the way up to 89 because I really didn't know where to put those 9 points. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriti are going to be our main buffs, and the main source of damage from this weapon, the main spell, is going to be the Impenetrable Thorns. And I have my Scatter Tree Blessing on the level 20, and I strongly recommend you to have it on 20 for the last boss of this DLC, because it is an absolute nightmare. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we begin with the boss fight? Okay guys, to buff our character with this build, we have to do pretty much the same that we do with other characters, so first of all use Golden Vow, then a Pickle Torten Leg, which in this case is completely optional, you actually don't need it this time, then use your Flask of Undros Physic and cast Hall of Shabriri. Then you have to switch your seal uh, for the Staff of Guilt in your offhand to boost the power of the Impenetrable Thorns. Refill your FP, refill your HP, and you are ready to go! Let's see what we can do. Boom. That is a lot of damage indeed. Oh my god, beautiful. Okay. Careful here. We don't have melee combat. Oh, this is fantastic. This is amazing, we broke her stance. Let's go! <laughs> wow, in four hits, bro! <laughs> this has to be one of the fastest ways to defeat Malenia, bro! <laughs> nice, he's coming, that's what I'm talking about. What up, buddy? Are you ready? Are you ready for the parry? Let's get destroyed! Oh my god, you're going wild right now. Nice. Let's see what we can do against this guy. Get melted, buddy. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Let's see what we can do against this bad boy. Oh! That's beautiful. Let's destroy him. Oh! No way. Poor guy. He's not ready for us. Oh. Is he done? <laughs> Is he done? He's done, guys! <laughs> Here we go, guys. What up, my guy? Looking great today. Nice, easy and smooth. Let's go. Decent second phase, hopefully, guys. Very piece of crap, bro. We're running! Run, 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 run! This is the good one! Oh my god, we did it! Okay, here we go. Do it! Let's go, guys! Finally, bro! Finally, bro! Oh my god! <laughs> It's not my proudest uh, kill, but uh, uh, you, you, as you can see, the build works. 